back to CrossFit Syntex uh, in part three of how to squat, how to squat according to an Olympic style weightlifter. Um, just as a review, we've been over in part one, we went over uh, how Olympic how lifters squat and why, and why you should squat that way as well. And in part two, we went over just the general setups, the, the foot position, the stances, stance width, and how to play with that to, to help people, and then how, uh, how you can be moving on, on the way down and on the way up and also uh, how to create that best possible, uh, deepest, most upright position, okay? And so we're gonna build on that today with, uh, with barbell, uh, doing the front squat, the back squat, and the overhead squat. We're still trying to achieve that same goal. We're still trying to stay as upright as we can and get as deep as we possibly can. Uh, before we get into this, I want you to uh, remember as a coach, what I, what I want my athletes to do, um, not just for Olympic style weightlifters, but, but for, uh, but for anybody else as well, uh, anybody doing the snatch and the clean and jerk, um, I'm going to mimic the snatch and clean and jerk as much as possible in all barbell movements that I do, and that uh, is even more important to me for the squat. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go. Obviously, for this front squat, I'm looking for it to be 100% um, mimic of the clean as much as possible because uh, we need that to carry over to the catch of the clean. So all the all the things, all the bad habits that you don't want to happen in the catch of your clean, for example. Uh, we want to stay away from that. We want to make sure that you're not doing that and reinforcing that for your uh, for your front squat. Okay. So the first front squat that we're going to do, uh, just to create a little bit of awareness of the rack position that I need uh, for the front squat, is called the Frankenstein front squat. And I'm going to bring my wife Jody over here to help us uh, to help me show you this. Okay. So she's just going to take the bar out. Okay. She's got a really high. Uh, on her shoulders right there, as high as she can possibly get, it's right up against her, against her neck. This Frankenstein squat particularly is really uncomfortable, uh, so you don't have to do a lot of these, but it's just to create some awareness. It's right up against the neck, and, and that's going to bother a lot of people. But what I want you to take note of when you're doing this is how it's sinking down into the shoulders, okay? And also, when she goes down, this is going to show me her best possible tight back upright position because if she's lazy, or it comes forward any at all, that bar is going to be likely to fall. So let me see a couple reps there, Jody. It's nice and slow. Okay, one more. Okay, and rack it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to see, again, that's going to force the best possible upright position. And I'm going to take a look at the lifter on the next one, which is just a regular front squat, and see if they're the same. If they're not, uh, if they're a little bit more slouched in, in the regular front squat, then there's a little bit of shoulder mobility issues going on there and stuff like that. Uh, so now when we put our hands underneath, again, I don't want a death grip on that thing. And Jody, let's go ahead and take it off and just show me with your hands all the way wrapping with those elbows down. Okay. So you see, and for Jody, it's, it's doubly important because she's a small lifter, so she doesn't have uh, uh, much of a uh, base here to really support that uh, that weight with. So I'm gonna I'm gonna want her to get those elbows up and really relax the hands. She's gonna really let it roll out in the fingertips. She's going to create that similar rack position that she had uh, with, the, with the arms out. Okay, she can go ahead and wrap it in. Alright, before I do that though, I'm going to set you up with a general clean grip. Okay, again, because we're trying to mimic the clean as much as possible. Uh, so whatever you're, whatever you're using for your clean grip, uh, we're going to go ahead and use that for the front squat. That's going to be the catch. Uh, for most people, we're looking at a thumb link outside of the nerling. Okay, uh, if uh, the extreme examples of a really small female may be in as much as right at the nearly, uh, and the other extreme of a large male may be out as much as the, fin the uh, pinky uh, on the rings right here. Okay, but what I'm looking for is for that bar the, the hands to be or the the uh, uh, index finger to be one to two inches outside of the shoulders when you have it in this rack position. That for most people is going to be the uh, the uh, position of most flexibility in that rack position. Uh, it's going to be individual, but again, that general setup is going to be right on for most people, okay? Also, what I want you to take note of, what I want you to pay attention to when you're in that rack position, we'll go ahead and see it back in that rack position. Okay, so you see Jody, she's about an inch outside of those rings, and that works pretty well for her. She's about two inches outside. So what I want you to really focus on is driving the elbows in and up as much as you can. So you're going to really force that on the, uh, all the way down and all the way up. Again, for most people, that's going to be right on. That's going to be right where we need to be. Okay, so if those elbows are, are a little bit lazy down and out, and I see people doing this a lot, and that means, usually means that the hands are wrapped a little bit, 
uh, too much as well. If you reinforce that, if you get used to doing that in your front squats, then the catch of your clean is, is most likely going to be a little bit lazy, a little bit soft, and, and maybe even a little bit forward. Okay? So you need to reinforce this. You need to really work hard and force that position so you get that good flexibility work up in this rack position that you need. Okay? So she's thinking, all she's thinking here is in and up with the elbows as much as I can and squatting in the same way that, that we went over in, in part two. Okay. Good. And that just gives her that insurance, that elbow position and that solid rack position just gives her that insurance of staying as upright and tight in the back as she possibly can. Okay. So moving on into the back squat. Uh, again, the back squat, I want to mimic the clean as much as possible and therefore the front squat as much as possible. So what I'm going to do uh, to make that happen, uh, to help me to stay that, to get in that upright position and to get deep, I'm going to move the bar up as high on my back as I can get it. Okay, so Jody, go ahead and show us that. She's going to get it up here, high on the back. Now, this position here, if you're not used to it, it's pretty much right on top of the bone. If you're not used to it, it can hurt for a couple weeks, uh, but, but you'll, you'll get used to it pretty quickly. And the one way... Uh, or what we're going to do to relieve this is we're going to create a bigger base and we're going to create a bigger base by forcing back with the, with the elbows. So just like you force up with the elbows in the front rack position, you're going to force back with the elbows in, in the back rack position. Another thing that that does is it just pokes the chest out a little bit more and it helps to, to tense everything, to lock everything in. Okay? If those arms are soft here as well, you're more likely to be soft in, in other places. Okay? Let's go ahead and see that. She's just looking to, to, she's just fighting upright and deep just like we did before, okay? Okay, good. So, uh, there are some differences in the, uh, in the high bar, rock bottom back squat and the, the lower bar, more parallel back squat. Um, I'm not, I could spend probably two hours going over that stuff, so I'm not going to do that. But just know for length lifting purposes uh, and for general health purposes, I recommend uh, that high bar rock bottom squat because for Olympic lifters specifically, we don't want to miss out on that good flexibility work that we're getting from the bottom and that good strength uh, coming out of the bottom that we're going to need for those cleans. So we're going to do the same thing in the back squat because even with the high bar back squat, uh, rock bottom back squat, we're going to be able to lift uh, a decent amount more than we can in the front rack position so we can get a little bit more leg work and still get that good quality upright uh, deep position. And, and if you watch some of the best lifters in the world, uh, a lot of them, their back position doesn't really look uh, that much different different between the uh, back and the front squat, and those their numbers are uh, uh, are pretty close, are closer to the, to the same. So that's what we're looking for there. Okay. Uh, now going into the overhead squat. Now what, what I'm going to do when I first introduce somebody to the overhead squat is set them up with a general snatch grip again, because most of the overhead squats that we do need to be done with the snatch grip because that snatch grip is weak. Uh, it's, it's a disadvantaged position and we need as much work as we can get uh, to strengthen that as much as possible. Now, with that said, uh, I'm not going to go over that specifically a whole lot right now. I'm going to do that in, in, in some other videos. And one reason why is because there's no rule uh, for overhead squats to say that it has to be snatch grip. In fact, if you're doing high rep uh, wads, low weight wads, um, you're going to be more efficient and conserve more energy if you can come in off of that a little bit. As long as you have the flexibility overhead, and I know shoulder flexibility is a huge issue for a lot of people in that overhead spot, but if you do have that flexibility, uh, for example, when I do wise, I'm absolutely in in my clean grip because that just conserves uh, so much more energy and the overhead squat is so much easier for me in that position. But uh, So that specific snatch grip that I would set people up in, I'll go over that in much more detail later. Uh, what I'm looking for here, Jody, let's go ahead and get in an overhead squat position. I'm looking for, first I'm looking for this overhead position, okay? And what I'm looking for right now, before she even goes down, is that those elbows are pointing up. So, those arms are going to be turned this way, okay? Pointing up with the elbows, alright? So let's go ahead and do, do a squat. And now when she squats, what I'm looking for is that those elbows can maintain that position. So if the lifter can set up this way, but as they go down into that squat, the, the elbow rotates forward, uh, it's something that we need to address, something that we need to try to, to get a little bit more mobility in the shoulders. Because what happens when you go down 
and that body's leaning forward a little bit, of course those shoulders have to go back to stay up over the top of you. So you need some good shoulder mobility to be able to maintain that good, that strong elbow position. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. Um, if they can't even set up like that from the beginning, again, we need to address it. And in the next video, that's specifically what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be going over um, what, what needs to happen uh, to help you gain that good flexibility in the hips if you can't get low or where in the, the ankles or in the shoulders, whatever it may be, all the stuff that I'm going to go over in the next video are, are, are going to help you uh, build on that. Okay? Um, also what I'm looking for is, is that the uh, when, whenever you're coming down that those arms aren't bending and, and those uh, uh, the bar is not coming forward. Okay? You need that thing to stay back up over the top of you and to do that the, the shoulders need to be more relaxed. Where you should be feeling force is up with the elbows. Okay? Up with the elbows. So Jody, let's just go ahead and see that in a little bit. Okay. Okay. So our elbows are pointed up. They're going to stay that way. They're, that bar is going back and staying up over the top of the curve. Again, if you're somebody where that, that bar is coming forward, those elbows are breaking and that, the bar is coming forward, we're going to address that in the next video. So definitely stay tuned for that next video. It's going to be probably the most important one because so many people are locked up in their in their squat positions. And especially, I can look at somebody that has a perfect air squat, a perfect front squat, and a perfect back squat, but if you put a barbell over their head, they look like a completely different athlete. I know a lot of you probably have that same experience. So I'm going to show you some tricks that you can pull. Um, in regards to that overhead squat being locked up or, or any of your squats being locked up, the best thing that you can do to improve that, to improve that mobility, is to do those movements. There are a lot of good, uh, there's a lot of good mobility information. There's more and more great mobility information coming out, and you guys all know where to find that, and you can use that. But make sure you're using it in combination with those specific movements. Don't think that you're going to improve, improve your position, improve your squat uh, very effectively with, with those other things alone. And I'm going to show you some stuff that you can use to go ahead and, and get heading in, into that direction. Because for those people that are that are forward like this and, and that's all they can do, you're still going to overhead squat. We're still going to have you overhead squatting and we want you to because that's the only way that we're going to ever improve that. Okay. Um, so, so, so stay tuned for that for sure. Thanks again to Progenics for helping me get these uh, tips out to you and we'll see you next time.